want to start, but how many have been enjoying, and I heard Kenny say it, but I got to keep saying Firm Foundation. How many have been enjoying the series Firm Foundation and Dominion? And I, I, I wrote down a takeaway. One of the takeaways in listening to Pastor Nears, I got the best seat in the house because I hear everything and see everything. And I've seen Pastor Nears from the basement until now. And if you know that, then you know God is with him. Amen. Amen. And so it's just awesome to see how he cares about you. Right. And Pastor T as well. So uh, one, of the, one of the takeaways in listening to Pastor Nears is that everyone is building their life on something. Everybody's building their life on something. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Either a firm foundation of scripture or unstable sands of the world. Mm. Right? So it's, one, it's no in between. You know how we want to stay in the middle? But you can only be on one end of this. And again, either the firm foundation of scripture or the unstable sands of the world. How many would agree? Yeah. And so... One of the things that I know is that God wants us to not only to dominate, but he wants us to uh, live in his dominion. Somebody say his dominion. His dominion. And so what, are, what, are he, what, is he, what is he saying to us when he's saying that? And the pastor's been talking about it so much, but he, he wanted uh, Luana and I to give, us, give, uh, give you our perspective, right? Because how many know so many different perspectives in, in the body of Christ, but we all uh, end up in the same place, right? That's the wonderful thing. Uh, one of the things that is, he gives us authority over every situation. Yeah. Oh, see, y'all should be excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> see, y'all playing me. My sister, was, we were talking this morning. She was talking about every time she gets in the morning, we got to have God. Yeah. Just to deal with the world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so you think just because I'm standing here with this nice uh, seersucker suit on, everything is great. <laughs> Man, this seersucker suit will get wrinkled in a minute. And how many know that's how the world is? It gets wrinkled. Oh, okay, I'm the only one to think that way. All right. And so um, here's what I mean by uh, making sure that we, every situation, physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual. Yeah. Let me say that again. Authority over every situation, physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual. And repeat after me. I'm here to dominate. I'm here to dominate. Oh, I can't hear you. Say it one more time. I'm here to dominate. And look at your neighbor and tell them, what you waiting on? What you waiting on? Let's go. Let's go. And so one of the things, I, I'm a person, when I used to teach, I, I asked myself questions. Because when I was in church, I used to always have questions all the time. For those, those who have never heard me speak, or always see me in the front with this big old head. You see my big old head in the back. But I, I was in church, I used to always have questions. And I would ask myself questions because I know that if I left and the God didn't answer my, my, um, my questions, I probably wasn't fulfilled. But how many know when you listen to the word, he will fulfill you? Yes. And so that's why when I started changing how I thought, I made sure I got a, anything. If it was a donkey standing up here, I got something out of it. Right? right? Yeah. I don't care who it is. I'm looking for God to say something to me. Yeah. And so... Uh, one of the questions that Pastor always talks about, why do we insist upon doing everything on our own? Man, so many of y'all are trying to do stuff on your own all the time. And I got a question for you. How, 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 how that's working out for you? How that's working out for you? Doing it on your own all the time. See, the world teaches us that we should be uh, in by ourselves, doing it by ourselves. But the word of God is totally different, mm -hmm. right? He, God wants to be our help, helper. Yeah. The, the Holy Spirit is what? Our helper. Yeah. And so God always, and this is one of the things I wanted to talk about this morning, is that God always shows me the victory mm -hmm. on how to dominate. He shows me. He shows me. Yeah. And here's what I know. He show you too. Yeah. Oh, but it's a, it's a requirement. Mm -hmm. in the, he shows me in the past and currently. And I, and I just have to be willing mm -hmm. to go through the process. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Somebody say process. process. See, that's the problem. Y'all don't want to go through the process. Y'all don't want to go through the process. And be, uh, before God showed me my wife, he had to first get me together. 
how I'm going to be her husband and I don't even know what I'm doing. That was a process. You know, a, a lot of times people say, I wanted to be married. I didn't ask God to be married. I just got into the things of God, and guess what happened? I got married. And in the process of that, uh, my wife, man, I love my wife. She, we started praying about our children before they was even born. I had to get in agreement with that. I'm like, man, I never saw nothing like that before. That's good. And so then I had to get in agreement with her about our children, that they would have scholarships, that they would uh, be the, the, the salt of the earth, right? I had to pray about that. And now I'm seeing the manifestation in my children. And here's another thing. Before I opened my business, I didn't realize that God put me around entrepreneurs all my life. Man, I had to go back and think about when I was five and six years old. I've been around business owners all my life. And when my wife married me, she knew that Broham was going to lead his good job sooner or later. This great, great woman of power and everything, she was like, hold on, you can't lead his good job. We just got married. <laughs> and guess what happened? When we came back from my honeymoon, we were offered a business to open up a business. 24 years later, I'm still doing that business. And so what I understood is that God was doing something in me and I didn't even know it. When I was young, working at my dad's barbershop, man, I, it, was some, it was crazy. I used to read magazines when I was seven and eight years old. My dad used to get mad at me, like, bring these magazines back to the barbershop. I was like, no, dad. I was like, guess what the magazines were? Black Enterprise. It was time. It was time. U.S. News. I was watching. I was reading these magazines like they was mine. I'm like, dad, these are mine. <laughs> Earl Graves is my brother. I don't know him, but I like him. <laughs> but God was showing me something, right? So we can never uh, denounce what God has um, exposed us when we were younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me say this. Even my dad, my dad at the barbershop, he would have, he would have tracks there, right? I mean, it, we would, uh, my dad would be off on Mondays and go cut people's hair at the barbershop, and he would take tracks. We would be on the bus stop. My dad would give tracks out. We'd be on the bi-state bus. My dad would be praying for somebody. I'm sitting there as a kid like, hey, Dad, you, you don't even know them. But how many know God was showing me something? He was giving me a heart for people. And so the other thing, too, that, that I find interesting is that even today, right now, I got to trust God for all my needs. Not some of my needs, all my needs. I was, Juan and I, we were talking one morning, we were talking about our business and customers. I told them, uh, I was thinking about it, uh, I, I worked for a particular company, and they only one time did they give me uh, leads, maybe about five or six leads. I've closed over 1,800 transactions. And out of those 1,800, somebody, uh, a company might have gave me 10 of them. Guess where the other ones came from? God. I want to end with this and then I'm going to let Lawan come. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, it says this. After you have suffered for a little while, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessings and what? Favor. God has given us what? Favor. Who called you to, to his own eternal glory in Christ with himself. Listen to this. Complete. Confirm. Strengthen and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty, forever and ever. What? Amen. And so before, as we get into this, I want to tell you the title of this message is, it's important that we understand everything that we do, dominating in everyday life. Dominating in everyday life. And so before I pass it on to Luan, I want to say this. There's a scripture that sticks with me because my former pastor spent a lot of, he's probably spent about three or four 
uh, years on this one particular scripture. And it's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. And I submit to each and every one of you, make sure you read and meditate on this scripture in about 10 different versions of the Bible. Yeah. I'm going to go over the message Bible. I'm going to make it simple for you to understand. But I submit to each and every one of you, make sure you meditate on this scripture at least once a week. Because it's vitally important. We're talking about dominating everyday life. The, uh, and here's what it is. It will, stop, if, if it will stop you from always being a victim and become a victor. Yes. So yes. many of us like being victims. But I submit to you the word of God is going to make you a victor. Yes. And so in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, it says this. And that, and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of best materials, mm -hmm. and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. Yes. This is no weekend war that will walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. Amen. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Oh, listen to this. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than just words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. Yes. In the same way, prayer is essential in going, uh, ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Yes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what your life would be if you confessed this every morning? Yes. Come on, talk to me. And so the first point I want to quickly go over, the first point today is live your life the way you want to leave your life. Yes. Live your life the way you want to leave your life. Yes. I heard Les Brown say this the other day, and it was kind of phenomenal. He said, hey, if you had 90 days to live, if you had 90 days to live, how, how many radical changes would you make? And that's how we have to live. Pastor says it all the time. He said, Pastor said, go to the grave empty. Begin with the end in mind. Yes. Somebody say God's plan. God's plan. Oh, no, Drake, not your plan. I'm talking about God's plan. <laughs> oh, look at all the young people. Oh, did he say Drake? <laughs> yeah, I listen to Drake too. Yes. But I'm talking about God's plan. Yes. Somebody say God's plan. God's plan. Jeremiah 20, 9, 11, it says, no. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Them a lot of words, right? But I want to concentrate on one word. That word hope, what does it mean? Listen to what hope means. I told my wife this the other day, I almost jumped out of my chair. Hope means it is to trust with confident expectation of good. It is trust with confident expectation of good. Go ahead, my beautiful, lovely wife. Praise the Lord. So, what Pastor Sam just said, all of what he said is how dominion, or how we dominate in life, right? So I'm going to go further Many of you that have heard me speak or talk, y'all know that I like words, right? And so I have an acronym for dominion, right? Um, so can you all put that, that acronym for dominion with all the, the letters up there? Because I want everybody to take a, you all see that? Here it is right here, okay. So for dominion, like he, my husband talked about how he made a decision to get his life together, right? So let's decide to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Decide to make Jesus your Lord. Yeah. Your Lord and Savior. Many of us have, made, have 
have decided to make Jesus our Savior. We've said the salvation prayer. But when you decide to make Jesus your Lord, that means you consult him on everything. You ask him about everything. You talk to him about everything. You walk, you, you think about how is this going to impact my relationship with God? How is this going to impact my purpose? What is God saying to me? Mm. Then you got um, obey, right? When you ask, you make that decision, obey the Holy Spirit and the word of God. A lot of people talking about something told me. <laughs> something told me. You know what something is. Mm. That is the Holy Spirit giving you direction. Mm. He's showing you what to do. He's saying things to you. I'm a seer, so not only does he say, the, not only is it something told me, something will catch my eye. The Holy Spirit will show me something. It might be a person. It might be an item. It might, I don't care what it is. You know, it, it's like my eyes just grab it. And once he shows it to me, I had to obey him. And go to the Word. We, how many of y'all got version on your phones? That's too few. Everybody in this place should have some version of the Bible on your phones. You heard Pastor Sam read that the Word is our defense. That's our, our only offense. Mm -hmm. That's the only offense that's listed in Ephesians 6, 10, and 18 is the Word of God. Do you all realize that? So you need to have your word on you. Some of y'all packing. Some of y'all got guns, right? You got your CCW, right? You don't go nowhere without your gun. Why would you go anywhere without your Bible? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. M, meditate on the word. Think about what the Lord is saying to you. When you leave here, don't, don't just let this word fall. Think about what the Lord is saying. What he said in Ephesians 6, 10, and 18. And meditation is not only contemplating it in your mind. It's speaking and muttering it out of your mouth. Father, I thank you that I have your shield of faith. I thank you, Lord, that I use your sword of the spirit, the word of God. I thank you, O oh Lord, that I am Bound. My loins are girt about with truth. I speak the truth and the truth only. That's how you meditate on it. And then you envision yourself doing the word of God. You envision yourself with whatever the promises that God has given you, whatever he's shown you, your business, high standards, your, all of those people, those positions filled in your branch at the bank in the name of Jesus. I decree it and declare it. Whatever he showed you, you think about that and meditate on it and say the word about it. Y'all know this is my part right here. Intercede about everything. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Pray, talk to God about it. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop. Pray over everything. I lost the earring last night. I was down on the floor. My God. I started praying. <laughs> she found it. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I lost my earring. I'm finding it. Guess what? Found it. Found it. <laughs> right? And she got 100 in rings, too, just so you know. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> not going to talk about that. Praying about things that are happening with our children, right? Praying about thing, his business, those deals, you know? All of those, I had to call those deals in. I have to say how many deals he's going to get a month. Mm -hmm. I have to pray about how much money he's going to make a month to keep our household going. I work, but I can't live like I want to live on what I do. <laughs> I mean, I ain't no fool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a prayer. Yeah, that sounds like you going in my pockets. <laughs> right. I am. It ain't no secret. I am. But I'm praying about it, right? I'm praying about relationships. <laughs> I'm praying about relationships. You know, when you all go to places, you don't want to be bothered with people. You got to pray about that, right? 
speaking of, nourish my spirit with biblical ideas and thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I have to talk to myself. You got to talk to yourself. Father, I thank you that I have your peace which loves, my, loves your law mm -hmm. and nothing shall offend me. Mm -hmm. I thank you that I endure long, that I am patient, I am kind. Mm -hmm. I nourish my spirit with biblical ideas and thoughts. That means too, when you get in my car, I got on uh, 95.5. <laughs> I listen to Boost. I don't have nothing against the other stations, but because of who I am and how I am made up, I can't listen to all that other stuff. Because I'll be sitting up in the church talking about, ladies, love you. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I can't do it. Others can. I, I'm just talking, you have to know yourself. It's called self-awareness, right? I think you're trying to talk about me. I, <laughs> Y'all know Pastor Sam, no, he know all the songs, all the artists, all of that. But he needs to. He's a pastor. He has to be, what does Paul say or Peter say? Be all things to all people. He needs to relate to, the, to everybody. So he can do that. His wife, let's move on. <laughs> Imitate Jesus. That's what I have to focus on doing. Imitating Jesus, right? Jesus loved everybody. He loved everybody, the rich, the poor, those that had the good oils on, those that stank, <laughs> those that had withered extremities. He loved everybody, and he talked to everybody. Mm -hmm. He talked, and he hung out with everybody. Mm -hmm. There was no place that Jesus would not go, mm -hmm. especially when the Lord led him. He went and did what God told him to do. Mm -hmm. We, ha we have to imitate him. You got to imitate. That's the only way you can survive in this world. Mm -hmm. When Satan came against him, Jesus spoke the word, right? He, he spoke the word and, and moved right on. Mm -hmm. He worshiped. He went off by himself when things got too hectic. He went off and prayed by himself. Some of us need to do that. When you know you're about to give people a piece of your mind and you can't afford to lose any of your mind. Go out by yourself and seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if, if you can't go nowhere, do this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You hear me? All this, y'all saw, saw Minister Kenny, Bishop Mink, that's what I call him, up here jumping around. Kenny has a ministry in his heart of worship at all times. Mm -hmm. That's something that we all have to do. You mm -hmm. got to put it. If you don't put it in, you're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. Garbage in, garbage out. Right? That's the other reason I can't listen to all that stuff. Because I, I don't need to put all that stuff in my spirit. That's not right. Mm -hmm. I got to put some stuff in that's going to come out. You worship. You live out of the overflow. Out of the overflow. If you're not putting a whole lot in, you got this much. That means it, when it's time, what, what are you going to do? Right. You don't have anything, any reservoir? Nope. Observe and look at what God is doing and saying. What is God doing in your life? What is he doing in others' life? Mm -hmm. If you don't see him doing it any, anything in your life, you need to keep thinking, because just by the mere fact that you can hear me speaking, he's doing something in your life. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. Don't be irritated when you see other people prospering. Right. Mm -hmm. Come, come on. on off of that hate mm -hmm. come on out of, come on, Come on out of it. Don't let your brother and sister in Christ be your irritation. Let them be your inspiration. Let them be your inspiration to do better, to see God, to be what the Lord has called you to be. Mm -hmm. Never, never give up. 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 You can rest a little while, but never give up. Take a break, but never, ever, ever, 
ever, mm. ever, ever. ever. I don't care. As long as there's life, there's hope. As long as there's life, you can win. As long as there's life, you can be what God has called you to be. As long as there's life, you can speak a word. As long as there's life, Jesus will work it out. As long as there's life, he'll do it for you. As long as there's life, you can believe the Lord. As long as there's life, you can bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So, I want to say this too as well. I want to give you the third point what we want to discuss today is how I personally try to dominate my life every day. Let me give you my personal perspective because you've heard a wonderful perspective <laughs> that only God can anoint. And so I want to say this, uh, Psalms, 91, Psalms 91, and I want you to write this scripture down because I want you to be able to confess this in your life every day, yeah. right? And I, I, I got it in the uh, Passion Translation, but verse 1, it says, when you're able, when you, you, you abide under the shadow of El Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God the Most High. In verse 2, it says, he's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. He's the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue me from every trap of the enemy. He will protect you from false accusations and deadly curses. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of maj majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield, keeping you from harm. Yeah. Verse 5, it says, you will never worry about an attack yeah. or demonic forces at night, nor by the fear of the spirit of darkness coming against you. Come on, can you see yourself confessing these things? Yeah. Yeah. So if you feel like a pity party, I submit to you is that not only do you follow the God that Lawan is showing you, but you go to Scripture because the Scripture can encourage you. David had to encourage himself in the Lord. We have the Word of God to encourage ourselves, right? So I want to show you some things that I just do personally. Uh, Lawan used to laugh at me when she first met me. She said, you interesting because you'll hear something and you'll immediately just do it. I had no choice because the uh, way I was doing other things, I was always failing. I failed in relationships. I failed in a lot of different things in my life. And I said, you know what? I'm giving, I can do all these things for uh, God, I mean the devil. Now I'm going to do things for God. And when I start doing things for God, I start seeing results. You know, Pastor, I love Pastor A. He always talks about, man, ain't y'all praying and not, seeing, uh, not getting results? And there are some things that we need to be doing. Remember I said the process. Many of you want to ignore the process, but I submit to you is that when you start doing what God tells you to do, you're going to start seeing fruit in your life. And by confessing God's word first, you'll see it. So here's just some little simple principles that I just wrote down. I see the Lord Jesus as the strength of my life. That's what I, every time I wake up in the morning, I got to see the Lord strength in my life. Not Simeon's strength, the Lord's strength. Here's the second thing. I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I have to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then here's another one. I have direction for life, for my life. What do I mean direction for my life? I, <laughs> I, have, I have a sense of purpose. Yeah. I know what God is telling me to do in my purpose. All of you have to get into a sense of purpose. Yeah. And so uh, here's another one. I, uh, I can withstand the storms and learn from them. I, here's the one thing. Uh, let me say this again. I can, I can withstand the storms and learn from them. I told my son Simeon one thing when he was young. I said, son, 
It took me six years. I went to about five different colleges, but I graduated. My wife corrected me. It was six <laughs> because I like to travel. So I was going from college to college. He was on tour. I was on tour. <laughs> Simeon's in town. What's up? Hey, don't I know you? And so, but I told Sim one thing. I said, Sim, it's 24 hours a day when you go to college. And you go to class three to four hours a day. I said, son, what you going to do with the mother 21 hours? Do you know this boy took that to heart? My son will not, he will do a lot of stuff, but he will not allow anybody to, to make him waste time. That boy, am I lying? My, my son do not play. Dad, I got to go study. It's one o'clock at night. I'm like, hold on, what? I mean, he is so, uh, he get that from his mother, but he is so impactful on his time. Many people think, I say at funerals, what the most uh, um, gift that God has given us is time. Everybody think they got it. And everybody think they got enough of it. And so another thing that I look at too is that I'm quick to forgive. Yes. You know why I still got a relationship with my daughter? Because I learned if I walk around trying to do what I want all the time, she ain't going to follow. She's going to look at me crazy. <laughs> so I had to forgive. Yeah. I had to forgive in all the things that I do. And my wife would tell you, when I forgive, you got to remind me what I was mad about. Right. Right? And then here's another one. Is that imp I try to impact the lives of others around me. I try to make sure I say or do something that would inspire others to follow Christ, yes. right? And then here's the last one. I try to have a servant heart or a servant spirit. That's why I'm submitting to you is that the best thing that ever happened to me is I am consistent in making sure I serve God. In everything that I do, I tell people, if you, man, if you heard my phone ring, you would be shocked to hear all the conversations that I have, right? And that's because I love to serve. And here's another thing. When I, when I got married, I understood I was in the service business. I was in the service industry. I had to serve her. So you always going to serve somebody. You got to choose who you will serve. Oh, well, that's how y'all going to look at me? Go ahead, baby. So if you all don't remember anything else that we've said today about dominate or dominion, I want you to remember, wow. Wow. What's wow? I think they got that. You all put that slide up real quickie. Write down what God said in his word about you and to you. Open your mouth and give him thanks and praise. And worship him. If you spend, you spend your time doing this daily, in the morning and at night, I promise you, you will continue to dominate. You will continue to dominate. You will have dominion. Now, Pastor Sam has a, something he wants you all to, he has something he wants to I share. I want to put this on the screen because I want all of us to confess this, this uh, confession. If they can put it on all the screens for me. And I want us to leave today and be in an agreement. But I also want you to take a picture of this because I want this to be a confession for you as well, too. Because all I'm doing is repeating what we said, and that's the Word of God. And because the Word of God can change anything and everything in your life. Yes. God is not limited to anything. Who would ever thunk that Simeon would have a business 24 years? Who would ever thunk that my most difficult uh, year in business was, I was seven years in the business? Most people say your most difficult time is the first two or three years. Mine didn't come to year seven or eight. But God still sustained me yeah. because I trusted him. And so I, I even think about um, yesterday we went to one of our members yesterday. They opened up a business, and I want to give them a shout out because God has given many of you businesses too as well. And that's Monica and Rod. Just stand up real quick so they can see you. But stand up, many, many of you... Many of you, many of you, God has called you into business. 
right? And so I'm going to tell you about this sister. She has the gym factory. But the most interesting thing that caught my attention yesterday, she spent 20 minutes, not on, her, first, uh, her first conversation was thanking God. Her second conversation was talking about all the people who supported her. The most important thing that she talked about through that whole 20 minutes, she was giving people the cheat code how to become a business owners. She was telling people detail by detail on every aspect of business. I mean, I texted her this morning. I was like, girl, you need to share that with people. Because she was, it was almost like so many people go into business don't want to tell you anything. This girl, the first day, was like, this is what you got to do. You got to make sure you get this. You got to make sure. I, I, it was awesome. And that's how God is with us, is sharing his power through all of us together. So I want us to confess this. This, uh, this morning, so, oh no, I got, you know, I got mine written down. So I want everybody to repeat after me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I am here on earth. I am here on earth. To have your authority and, have, and dominate. To have your authority and dominate. Authority over every situation. Authority over every situation. Physical. Physical. Financial. Financial. Emotional. Emotional. And spiritual. And spiritual. I will live my life. I will live my life the way you want me to leave my life. The way you want me to leave my life. I will put on the whole armor of God. I will put on the whole armor of God. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by. And hearing by. The word of God. The word of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For we have dominion. We have dominion. We decide to make Jesus. We decide to make Jesus. The Lord and our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior. We obey the Holy Spirit. We obey the Holy Spirit. And the word of God. And the word of God. We meditate on the word. We meditate on the word. Day and night. Day and night. We intercede. We intercede. About everything. About everything. We nourish, we nourish our spirit. We nourish our spirit. With biblical ideas and thoughts. With biblical ideas and thoughts. Come on now. Yeah. We imitate Jesus. We imitate Jesus. In all actions. In all actions. And thoughts. And thoughts. We observe. We observe. And look at what God and look at what God is doing and saying is doing and saying to us every day. To us every day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We will never give up. We will never give up. We write down what God said. We write down what God said in His Word. In His Word about us. About us. And to us personally. And to us personally. We open our mouths. We open our mouths and give Him thanks. And give Him thanks. And praise. And praise. We worship God. We worship God in spirit. In spirit. And in truth. And come truth. on, lift up your hands. Let's give the Lord a hand clap Woo! this morning. Oh, hallelujah! Glory to Your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We worship your name, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. We will make this confession public to each and every person who wants it, but how many know God is an awesome God? He's a loving God. He's a caring God. And he will never leave us nor forsake us, meaning he'll never leave us physically or emotionally. God is that good for us. Amen? Somebody let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. So each and every service, we 